Testosterone is the major uh, male hormone, sex hormone, that uh, the body produces. Uh, it is something that gradually rises and then uh, increases at the point of puberty into adulthood, and it's very important for many functions, including maintaining a sense of well-being, bone and muscle mass, uh, sexual function, and overall vitality and vigor of a gentleman. Typically, uh, testosterone levels will peak in puberty and then gradually start to drop after about age 30. With each passing decade, it will continue to decline. Because testosterone does tend to decline over one, the course of one's life, it often will be something that occurs more often with advancing age. That is, the older the gentleman is, the more likely we'll see low testosterone. However, however it can occur in any age. It's estimated around age 40 that up to 10% of men already are experiencing low testosterone. By age 70, that number is about 30%, and after age 80, it's actually over 50%. Sometimes it can be difficult for a patient to, to know that they have low testosterone. Uh, they might consider it just part of aging, feeling more tired, depressed, fatigued. But typical symptoms would be loss of stamina, weakness, lack of energy, difficulty with uh, libido, sexual function, symptoms like that, change in muscle mass. Well, if they have certain symptoms, again, erectile dysfunction or notice that they have maybe had weight changes or feeling more sluggish, that might be, those might be indications to have their, their physician screen them for that. Testosterone levels are best checked in the morning. That's typically when the peak levels occur. Different labs will have different values, but many times, for example, peak levels uh, in the morning should be at least over a range of 300 to 350. And then if those levels are low, further confirmatory testing can be done. Testosterone certainly has become a more hot topic uh, in, in recent years, and I think a lot of this is driven by several factors. First of all, I think people are more open to discuss issues such as erectile dysfunction with their physician, and that might be more likely to prompt testing for testosterone. In addition, I think having the baby boom generation, which wants to maintain their vigor, health, and vitality, are a driving force in terms of testing for low testosterone. And finally, perhaps one of the biggest contributing factors are the proliferation of commercial advertising with new preparations, these new testosterone gels, which has prompted people to say, maybe this could be me. With any medication, you do have to weigh risk versus benefits. Some of the benefits a patient might see, again, are improvement in stamina, energy level, libido, sexual function, also physically some improvement in muscle mass and bone mass. Uh, if there was a, any indication of anemia, low blood count, testosterone therapy may improve that as well. Um, however, like any treatment, there are potential risks involved. Um, these risks might include worsening of sleep apnea, uh, things such as acne, perhaps uh, sometimes developing some male breast tissue or gynecomastia. Also some concern about causing the blood to become too thick, a condition called erythrocytosis. And finally, uh, there is some concern about issues regarding prostate health, both prostate enlargement and some controversy regarding is testosterone replacement therapy a risk factor for prostate cancer. Um, the treatments are a variety of different forms. Uh, most likely they represent injectable testosterone or transdermal patches or gels. There are pills that are out there, but we don't recommend those. If taken as an oral ingested pill, that may have damage on the liver and actually lead to liver tumors. So testosterone is best given via injections, you, there is a form that you can do within the inner cheek or gum um, that doesn't go through the, the stomach or the liver. Uh, and then finally, these gels or transdermal patches, and there's a variety of ones that are available for that. Finding the right form of treatment, the replacement, is really depends on the individual patient. Injections are the old form of testosterone that certainly are a very good option for many patients. They're inexpensive and typically running maybe somewhere between $10 and $30 a month. Um, they get good levels of testosterone in the bloodstream, so you know that you're getting efficacy with regards to that. Testosterone injections can be given as an intramuscular injection as 100 milligrams once a week, 200 milligrams every two weeks, or 300 milligrams every three weeks is a typical dose. Downsides of testosterone injections are that they're painful, they're intramuscular, so they're deeper than, for example, an insulin shot. 
oftentimes have to be given by health professionals, so it's a matter of scheduling that with one's uh, clinic or physician. And then finally, there is a, this sort of roller coaster effect where you get these peak levels and then troughs. Sometimes they're not as advantageous as, as the gels or the transdermal sy systems, which lead to more uh, uh, basically um, stable levels of testosterone. And so one of the, the issues is when a man is found to have low testosterone, we have to figure out what is the cause of low testosterone. It could be due, any, due to anything such as what we call primary test, uh, gonadal failure. This is with mumps or trauma or a condition called hemochromatosis where you have too much iron in your system that can lead to testicular failure primarily. Um, more commonly, it will be due to a problem in the the brain, an area called the hypothalamus or pituitary, whereby you're lacking hormones that are stimulating normal testosterone secretion. And sometimes that can be as simple as, as stress or sleep apnea. Sometimes a matter of losing weight, exercising more, getting enough sleep actually can help testosterone levels improve. Sometimes it's idiopathic. We, we don't know what the cause is, and then we just optimize treatment for, for that patient. Actually, in those cases, the, the better treatment would be to replace those hypothalamic or pituitary hormones, and we will do this when a, a, a gentleman has low testosterone and also infertility because of a pituitary problem. In that case, you give injectable analogs of FSH and LH. These are very expensive. Um, they're very cumbersome for doing for just routine replacements, so we really only use those medicines when a person's actively de desiring fertility for time until you actually you know, build up sufficient sperm count for achieving fertility. And that may be typically somewhere between three and nine months, sometimes longer on that. What is the normal level? Again, I said earlier that physiologically, testosterone levels naturally do decline. Is the treatment that you do for an 80-year-old same as what you would do, for example, a 40 or 50-year-old? And I don't think anybody really knows the answer to that question. And in fact, there are no long-term large studies looking at the risks and benefits with testosterone. We know from smaller studies what the benefits are. Again, improved sense of well-being, muscle mass, bone mass, uh, sexual function. Uh, we know that some of the downsides include worsening sleep apnea, gynecomastia, acne, uh, thickening the blood, erythrocytosis, and possibly some prostate issues. For a gentleman who is older, there might be already some increased issues with the prostate gland, and that might therefore be a risk. But I should point out that testosterone replacement therapy has never been shown to be a causative agent for prostate cancer. Having said that, we know that certain kinds of prostate cancers do respond to removing testosterone via various therapies. And so therefore, the thought is, if you're adding testosterone, is that in a way adding fuel to the fire? And all I can say on that regard is that any patient typically typically 40 and above, it is recommended if they are on testosterone replacement therapy to have regular routine PSA checks and prostate exams just as they would otherwise. Testosterone is, is, is diagnosed by doing a blood test. Again, the preferred time is typically in the morning because that's when levels are at a peak. Testosterone can fluctuate, so we don't often just base it on one value. We will do um, what we call a pooled value where you might do three consecutive ones or do several on other days. And then if the testosterone level is low, we'll often then test for pituitary problems and other things as well. Testosterone via injection or gel is, is synthetically made but is an analog of what, what humans produce themselves. It works effectively and, and it will achieve the desired range. Uh, target ranges are typically uh, somewhere between about 400 and 800 uh, as a value for testosterone. Illness can certainly cause low testosterone. Uh, stress can be a factor. As I said, sl untreated sleep apnea sometimes is something that can do it beyond something more serious, such as a pituitary lesion or um, iron overload or something that causes problems, but it will go up and down. It does tend to, it does tend to, to fluctuate. So typically, first low testosterone is taking a careful history, those symptoms that we mentioned, loss of uh, energy, loss of libido, erectile dysfunction. A physical exam is typically performed, including listening to heart, lungs, uh, checking the thyroid gland, checking the testicles for uh, low testosterone. Oftentimes, there may be testicular atrophy or softening or, or shrinking over time. 
Um, it's, it's recommended again over age 40, a baseline prostate exam. And then as far as blood work, we're of course checking testosterone and then oftentimes these pituitary hormones, FSH, LH, prolactin, checking a blood count, uh, kidney and liver function tests, um, iron studies, those are ones that come to mind. Testosterone levels also drop in women, and first of all, I should back up, testosterone is an important hormone in women, obviously in much smaller quantities than what it is in men, but it's important for maintaining also some energy and libido. And typically at menopause, when the, ov the ovaries no longer work, testosterone levels will drop. And so for women, there are uh, smaller preparations of testosterone that sometimes are used to help boost levels. The, the commercially available gels are not FDA approved for use for women, but there are some compounding uh, creams that can be made. There are some oral forms that, because they are such low doses, don't have the liver toxicity that, that we see with men that can be used in women too for those that need. But if, with women, you do have to be careful as far as you don't want deepening of the voice or facial hair or some other masculinizing symptoms. Regular follow-up is important in terms of doing follow-up testosterone levels. We like to check blood count to make sure that the blood is, again, not getting to the point of, of excess. Uh, we like to check liver function tests. Um, sometimes we often mention getting cholesterol panel as well, and, and in the case of men, 40 and over PSA and, and, and those type of tests. Sometimes I'll get the question where people will ask, what if my levels are normal and I were to take testosterone supplements, would it help me? And the general answer is that no. Typically when you start using a testosterone gel or some other exogenous form, what will happen is it'll turn off your brain hormones of FSH and LH and thereby inhibit your own testosterone production. And in a sense, it's a wash. Your levels really will not improve. And in doing so, you may lead to testicular um, shrinkage as well as loss of fertility, decreased sperm count. And so it is not recommended to use or abuse testosterone replacement therapy if you don't need it. Likewise, what about using superphysiologic doses? In other words, trying to get those doses of testosterone up higher beyond what is typically considered normal. In that case, it also there's more danger um, in terms of those potential side effects, erythrocytosis, the gynecomastia male, uh, breast development, testicular atrophy, loss of, um, of fertility, more irritability, more uh, acne, things like that. So again, taking testosterone or using it in excess is not recommended. It certainly is something that is, can be used and abused in terms of uh, an anabolic steroid type, type component. Uh, that's again where some of the oral ones, uh, uh, medroxy testosterone, uh, for example, are ones that are felt to be very unsafe as they can cause liver damage and toxicity. Um, any injectable or patch or gel form too, again in excess is, is felt to be dangerous. And, Sometimes you can lead to permanent damage by using these or abusing these.